Just cancel SLS and give SpaceX all the money. It sounds simple, but here's why it isn't. If you want to cancel SLS and redirect that money to SpaceX, Congress has to do it. They have to shut SLS down in law, then pass new legislation to fund something else. NASA just can't move the money. Only Congress can. And unspent appropriations, they revert to the Treasury. It's not like it's money NASA can just use. So here's what Congress actually did in 2025. They funded additional SLS vehicles for Artemis 4 and 5 and signaled support for flying SLS into the 2030s. But every future mission still depends on later budgets. And yes, according to NASA's Inspector General, each SLS rocket costs at least $2.5 billion to produce. The OIG called the agency's cost reduction goals highly unrealistic. So why keep it? Because SLS is the only flight-proven super heavy rocket built to throw Orion straight towards the moon. Artemis 1 flew successfully in 2022. Artemis 2, the first crewed flight, is set to launch no later than April 2026. We know the hardware works. Meanwhile, the commercial alternatives are still maturing. Starship has reached orbital class trajectories on test flights, but the lunar stack, tankers, depots, crewed lander haven't flown end to end yet. It's still very much a test vehicle and not a crew rated moonship. And Blue Origin is building its own architecture. Its new New Glenn 9x4 is going to be the super heavy lift launcher for them. Blue Moon Mark II, the crewed lander for Artemis V, and the reusable cis lunar transporter to haul propel between Earth and the Moon are all still being developed. Both companies depend on large scale orbital refueling and long duration cryogenic storage that nobody has demonstrated at this scale. There have been some small propellant transfer tests, but nothing like the multi-tanker depots that these lunar plans require. The tech is immature, but Congress has just bought them some runway to prove it works. And here's where it gets interesting. Right now, SLS exists because you need a super heavy rocket to send Orion directly to lunar orbit in one shot. No depots, no on-orbit assembly. But there's another reason SLS Block 1B in particular has to exist, and it's called Gateway. Gateway is a lunar space station NASA is building with international partners. Most of its modules need to launch with Orion, because Orion provides the guidance, navigation, and control to actually assemble the station at the moon. That means those modules have to ride on the same rocket as a crew capsule. Only SLS Block 1B can do that. It's the only vehicle that can throw Orion plus a 10-ton module toward the moon in a single launch. Six SLS launches are needed to complete Gateway and do two lunar landings. Only five are funded so far, and one has already flown. So here's the uncomfortable truth. As long as Gateway exists in its current form, SLS Block 1B has a job that commercial rockets can't easily replace. But that doesn't mean commercial space is irrelevant. If orbital refueling matures the way SpaceX and Blue Origin hope, the next generation of lunar missions, after Gateway is built, could look very different. A smaller, cheaper booster could lift a crew capsule to low Earth orbit, top it off there, then send to the moon for a fraction of today's costs. Power and lift off. Go, go, go. By the late 20s or early 30s, there should be real flight data and cost numbers from Starship and Blue Moon. That's when it makes sense to talk about what comes after SLS, based on hard results, not PowerPoints. This isn't SLS versus Starship or New Glenn. Right now, it's about building Gateway and keeping moon missions alive while the next generation of rockets proves it can do the job. And if they succeed, SLS gets us there, but what comes next keeps us there. Okay, want to hear a funny story? Right when I finished editing and making this video, Jared Isaacman, the likely next administrator of NASA, had his confirmation hearing, and in the very first question he got from Senator Cruz, he answered essentially the exact sentiment and story arc of this video. So I thought we might give Jared the last word here on the concept of SLS verse or with commercial space. And I think you put a bow in it quite eloquently. So take a listen. We believe that the current architecture with SLS is the fastest path to achieving our near-term lunar objectives which should be to return to the moon before our great rival and establish the infrastructure so that we can realize the scientific, economic, and national security value. Now we have the first mission, which is approaching in just a matter of months, which is Artemis II, where we will fly around the moon. The next mission, Artemis III, we're gonna land astronauts on the moon. There's a lot that has to happen in between Artemis II and III. So in that respect, I am grateful that the one big beautiful bill affords us the opportunity of additional heavy launch uh, uh, vehicles through Artemis 4 and 5. 
Uh, now, in order for uh, in, in, with respect to the continuity of the mission, Senator, in order for us to actually land the astronauts on the moon, it will mean that one, or ideally uh, two, uh, commercial partners will have pioneered reusable heavy launch lift capabilities and orbital propellant transfer to get the lander to the lunar environment. Um, and when we see American astronauts walk on the moon again, it means one or both of them were successful. So in doing so, after completing uh, the Artemis V mission, which is already contemplated in the one big beautiful bill, we should have numerous options available to us to have routine and affordable missions to the lunar surface uh, for continuity beyond Artemis V. Well said, Jared, and I wish you best of luck being NASA's next administrator.